Hey y'all, what is going on? This is Jesse Bell from the 19th hole. I've got a tournament announcement for you all today before we get into talking about the tournament. If you look down towards the bottom of the page, that is the information to find me on uh, different social media outlets. So, I've got Facebook, Twitter, and Snapchat. You can also find me on Facebook on my community page, Golf Clash the 19th hole. Uh, and definitely never feel never feel afraid to message me or, or contact me if you have a particular question about something. So the next tournament we got is the Spring Major Tournament. This is the tournament we've been waiting on. Um, there's been a lot of buzz as to what kind of course we would get for the Spring Major Tournament. We got a course with a new name, but it doesn't look like we got a new course. Uh, so unfortunately, you know, a little bit disappointed there. But this is a course that a lot of people had issues with the first time we played it. So this will be kind of Playdemic's chance to kind of uh, make things right. And hopefully they got it to where people don't experience the same type of issues as far as like lag and the, the needle glitch stuff as, uh, as they did in the last tournament. It starts on Monday, May 11th. And, uh, you know, just like in any tournament, you know, we're going to have the four divisions, Rookie, Pro, Expert, and Masters. So the way these tournaments work is they start on Monday, and you have three opportunities to qualify, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. If you qualify on Monday, then you don't have to worry about Tuesday and Wednesday. But if you don't qualify Monday, you have those two extra times to qualify. Qualification is nine holes, and you have 24 hours to complete those nine holes to qualify. I think if you finish in the top 50%, you move on. Um, if you qualify, you move into opening round, which takes place on Thursday and Friday. The change between qualification and opening round is the amount of holes you play and the time you have to play them. Um, unlike qualification where you play nine holes, you play 18 holes in the opening round and you get two days to finish your, uh, your roundup. Um, if you finish in the top 50% of that bracket, then you move into the weekend round, uh, and it has the same rules as the opening round. you got 48 hours to finish 18 holes, and that takes place on Saturday and Sunday. Keep in mind, while you are playing your, uh, playing your matches throughout the tournament, you can win prize chests in each match, just like you would win in tour play. So in the rookie division, if you win during qualification, opening round, or weekend round, you get a tour three chess. If you win in pro, tour six, experts tour nine, and masters tour 12. So keep in mind that these chests do pile up as you play the tournament. So that's a nice little extra prize that you earn while playing the tournament. What you see here on this screen are the actual prizes for gold medals for each one of the divisions. And of course, you know, those prizes will scale down uh, on the weekend round um, all the way down to 100th place. The ball that you get for winning in the major is a little bit different when it comes to the Kingmaker. Uh, each uh, major tournament has their own little special like logo for that actual division. Uh, so as you can see on the Kingmaker ball, there's a little bit different of a, a little logo, and it's differently colored depending on what division you play in. The banners are also just a little bit different to them. Um, they just have a little bit different of a look compared to a regular tournament banner. These are the rules. The rules do not change for the major tournaments. Uh, the rookie play from the front tee. Pro expert play from the second tee, and masters play from the third tee. The wins, as always, kind of progressively go up as you get higher in your, your division levels, um, and so do the needle speeds. The hidden spin, just like always, is only applicable in the expert and the masters bracket. Rookie and pro do not have to worry about that. And basically, hidden spin means that you won't be able to see your opponent changing their spins, and you won't be able to see their ball guide when they're getting ready to take shots. So, you know, those things will not be viewable in the higher divisions, but in the lower divisions, you will still be able to see uh, those different things happening. This is the course, the Yamil Dunes. And, uh, you know, if you look at it real closely, you may say, oh, cool, new course, but then you kind of start looking at it a little closer, and you realize, wait, that's the dreaded Dunes course. Yes, this is the dreaded Dunes course. Um, I don't know, the jury's still out on, like, what it's going to look like. Maybe they just made it daytime and took out those those lights and dreaded um, background effects that made everything so laggy, but we'll have to wait and see. But, yes, this is the same course that we had back at the Dreaded Dunes Tournament. They just renamed the course to the Yamil Dunes, and I believe, I believe I'm pronouncing that right. So anyways, this is uh, it's an interesting course. I actually like this course. 
Um, and it's a lot of different opportunities and chances to do some fun shots for sure. And uh, all right, we're gonna go and talk about the holes one through nine. I'm gonna give you a little bit about uh, info about them and uh, some information on the elevations as well. All right, be right back. All right, so starting out here with hole number one. And we start out with a par four. So for here on the drive, we'll play plus 10%. And these holes will be findable on tours 4, 9, and 11 starting on Thursday. So if you want your chance to play these tours, you can find them on tours 4, 9, and 11. And those three tours will cover each of the three T's. So yeah, tour 4 is T1. Uh, tour 9 would be tour, uh, T2 and uh, 11 would be T number 3. So definitely going to have a chance to play these holes and uh, get a little bit of a look at them uh, towards the end of this week, which I think will be yeah, tomorrow. So they should be out tomorrow. All right, so hole 1, par 4, um, off the drive is 10%. And, you know, most time, you know, people are going to play this one to the right side. You know how to play it up here to the right between these bunkers. You know, and you're just trying to get up into this general location right there. Um, you can also play it to the left side here, which you would probably be bouncing after the bunker, and just try to get up that fairway as best as you can that way. Uh, those are the two general rules, general ways uh, that people will play this hole. If you're playing it from the third tee, the, um, the driving elevation is plus 15%. So keep that in mind. Front two tees, 10%. Third tee, 15%. For your second shot, depending on how far you get up on your drive to the right-hand side, you're either going to be in a long iron or a short iron distance to the hole. You have a chance, the opportunity to bounce it either before the green or farther up near the slope of the green. If you bounce it before the green, you're going to look at maybe a couple bars of top spin. but if you bounce it up more towards the green, then you're going to be playing a shot with, with back spin. The second shot is going to be 0% elevation. Playing it from the left hand side, it's going to mostly be a long iron uh, or a wood shot, depending on where you're playing the shot. And, um, you know, it's a shot that I saw played last time we had this hole. But, you know, I think playing it from the right hand side is definitely your better chance at the eagle drop. Um, although, you know, some people do prefer to play their second shots with a wood club like the sniper. So if that is a situation from you, for you, then playing it to the left hand side is going to be probably the way you want to play it so that you can work in that, that sniper option for your shot. Um, I would play um, probably the same 0% from the left-hand side as well. It is uh, a fairly flat shot uh, to that green. All right, and that's hole number one. Hole number two, we got a par three. So on this par three, plus 10%, is going to be our elevation from all three of the um, the tee shot places. Uh, from the rookie position, you can play a shot where you bounce over there. Um, some people were playing the rough bump right here, although it's a very dangerous rough bump. As you can see, it's a very narrow area of uh, of rough, and I would really, to me, I would wait and see what kind of a wind we have. If you have some sort of like a straight tailwind or straight headwind. Then in that case, you're going to be adjusting up and down that little, you know, that little rough uh, patch. So that may not be a bad shot. But anything where you're adjusting to the left into that bunker or back left into that bunker, that would be a, a definitely a difficult way to play that hole. Also, you can bounce it off the fairway there uh, into the hole that way. So those are basically the three ways you can play it in the rookie. Um, but I would say the first, the left and the center way are in rookie. But from the second tee people playing it from the, the right side, uh, and even, I think you could play the middle rough bump with like a, a quarterback, uh, would be a club that you can use for that shot, but you're probably going to have to use like a, like a wind ball, because otherwise, you know, depending on the wind direction, you could definitely be between clubs with your driver and your wood club, so a few different options you can play here on this hole, and it's definitely an aceable hole. But, you know, it's not one that, uh, you know, it's a guaranteed one. Although, with the correct wind, that rough bump can really make this hole a lot easier, I think. So we'll just have to wait and see what kind of wind we have. Hopefully we get, hopefully we get some tough winds. This is a major tournament. 
I don't I don't think it helps for anything to be just overly easy and automatic. Uh, we don't need another hole one like we had last tournament. All right, hole three, par five. This one right here will play plus ten percent from our tee boxes, and this one right here is the fun hole. Um, you know, I don't really see an advantage in playing to the left-hand side, but if you did play to the left-hand side, it would just be a driver with the max tap, top spin, and power to get as far down that fairway as possible, and then it would be a wood shot that you would land it somewhere in here uh, and try to use right spin and top spin and curl towards the green. I don't believe that is going to be our play, though, um, but it's definitely there if that's what you choose to do. I think the way that most people are going to play this hole is going to be to the right-hand side where we bounced it before this rough, uh, over the rough, and then up this fairway, trying to get it up here in the fairway. And then from there, we're playing a rough bump here where we're going to land our ball in this general location. Uh, and that last time, we had a really nice funnel to the hole uh, for that shot right there. And we played that one uh, at 0% elevation. Now keep in mind, you know, some of these things can change depending on the wind, uh, and sometimes you can, uh, you know, adjust offset into your elevation uh, for the wind, you know, instead of actually offsetting your shot to the hole. So elevations can definitely change um, the way you play them, you know, customize in a tournament. So just keep that in mind. But it was a sniper for the expert, and uh, in the rookie, you know, I think the rough bump was definitely a possibility as well. The only difference in rookie is sometimes rookies probably don't have the same type of ball guide number that a higher level division player plays. So there may be a little bit of more of a guesstimation going on with that ball guide and just trying to hope, you know, hopefully aim that one towards the hole and catch that funnel. But it's definitely uh, the play from last time. And if that funnel is still there, it'll be the play this time again as well. Hole number Let's say hole number four. So we got hole four and another par three. This one right here is going to be, let's see, 10% from the first two tees and 15% from the third tee. Now, I know for the second tee for sure, the rough bump is the play on this hole. Um, in the rookie, you know, I think the rough bump's available. You can also go with the bounce over shot, though, as well. And those will be the options. Um, I think I remember playing the rough bump with, was it the sniper or the long iron? It was either the sniper or the long iron last time. And um, I, think it was, I think it was the long iron. And I would assume for the rookie, it would also be a long iron, like a Goliath. Because you're going to have to have one of your, your clubs that have a lot of topspin. And in rookie, you know, most of the time that will be your Goliath, will be your, your best option. The other option would be to kind of land the shot more up towards the green with, uh, you know, just a bunch of backspin and left spin. But I think the rough bump uh, is definitely going to be the best way uh, to try to get the ace on this hole. So just remember, from the front two tees, it's 10%, but then from the third tee, it is 15% because it's a little bit higher uh, uphill for the shot. All right, hole number five. This one right here, you have the option of playing two different ways, and especially in the rookie with a power five ball, this is a hole where you can drive the green, especially if you have a, a decent level uh, extra mile. I think extra mile five, six will make the green here in the rookie with the berserker, and that is if we get the same type of wind. Of course, if we get more of a side wind or a headwind, then that wouldn't happen. But the way that shot's being played uh, is, you know, to the right side, uh, where you land your shot in here and just bouncing it up there towards the green. Either you get onto the green, uh, or you will get just short of the green, which would be right there uh, in wedge uh, territory. Now, if you're playing from the second tee, uh, most likely we're not going to get a send it type of wind, although we may, and if we do, then the same type of shot will be in play as you had in the rookie. Uh, but last time we had a wind where we had to play it up. It was a headwind, and really you were just playing your shot up uh, this fairway uh, into this area right here 
for a, a like a short uh, iron shot to the hole. Most likely, uh, most people played the hornet uh, or the thorn. And um, the way I played this hole though was with a, a Thor, a topspin shot where I bounced it over this bunker and then up this fairway. We got two right about in there with a really nice shot to the hole. And we had a really nice straight uh, tailwind for that shot on that second shot. So that made that shot really nice. So that would definitely be an option to play uh, it if you wanted to play it that way. The drive is plus 10%. And then the second shot is 0%. So 10% and 0%. There are There is some elevation in this course just not on these these first few holes but there is definitely uh, some elevation uh, elsewhere on this course so you know that's the two ways to play this one if you get to send it win you can play a shot to the green or to the the edge of the green to the right hand side otherwise you're going to lay it up short and you're going to be looking at short iron shots to the hole uh, you know pending the type of wind that we get all right hole number Let's see, hole six, par five. This one right here, we're just trying to go straight up this fairway as far as we can. Trying to get as far as we can. Now, the thing about this one is you do have those bunkers here and you do have the, um, the rough there on the left. So it's a very uh, interesting shot. It's um, definitely one to be careful. Uh, and try to set it up as best as you can, trying to great proof your shot. Uh, you know, as you as a player, you got to kind of know your weaknesses and which which side you tend to hit great on. So if you find that you normally hit a great right ball, then you definitely want to try to set it up in a way where a great right won't hurt you. Um, but you always have that option to play left, you know, to this larger fairway uh, if you want to as well. The problem is playing to the left takes you farther away from the hole. So it really would make that second shot um, very tough on you. You definitely want to be to the right and up the middle for your second shot to have a really good chance here um, at this green. The albatross here is probably one of those albatrosses that most people will not see this tournament. But it's definitely, you know, it's a possibility for sure. Um, the drive's 10%. The second shot's going to be 20%. Uh, and from up here, you know, you have a chance to go for the rough bump. If you get farther up this fairway with like a really good drive and you have good wind and higher level, then you can go for more of a shot straight at the hole off that fairway. Um, but, but in general, you know, for most people, we're just really going to be trying to get to this, this green and get the eagle, I think, uh, without making any major mess ups along the way. Because this is a hole that I don't think we can afford to get the birdie on. Uh, so I would definitely suggest, unless you get really comfortable with this hole and we get really good wind, uh, to just really concentrate on playing something uh, strong and um, solid to get that eagle. Alright, move on to the next hole. Alright, so we got hole number seven here. And that's our final par three. And this is a, a little bit more of a, I would say it's more of a difficult par three. And it's just one that's kind of going to be tough to, to get the ace on, but it's definitely... It's possible. It's possible. So one and two will be plus ten percent, and then this back tee is going to be twenty percent for the drive. Now, the possibilities you have, you can play the rough bump there, which would be a very dangerous rough bump, in my opinion, uh, or you can play a bounce shot right here uh, to the hole. And I think the hole is somewhere right in in there. I don't see the flag stick, but it's somewhere right in there. So those are your two options, is going to be the bounce shot or the rough bump. Now, this fairway section right here is sloped going downhill, so it's going to provide that left to right bounce. So, you know, it's important to try to find a landing zone on this fairway that's going to give you the most consistent bounce, you know, attempt after attempt. Um, I think that's going to be key. Uh, to, to really figuring out this hole. If you could find a good consistent landing spot, and then you can dial in your spins from there. If you can't find a consistent landing spot, then you know you never know. You're going to be laying on a different type of, of slope each time, and you won't have any kind of a consistent bounce on your shot. So I think that's going to be the, the important thing here, is finding that, that good spot to land where you can find that good consistent bounce. And the way that you can do that is once you find that spot, you want to pay attention to your rings, and find some sort of a landmark 
uh, that you can look at and, uh, and you can say, all right, this ring is touching maybe, you know, this rough line or, you know, this ring is touching this rough line on the left. So use that landmark uh, as a way to uh, consistently line up your, your shot once you find that, that landing zone that you want to use for this hole. All right, moving on to hole number eight. Hole eight here. And this looks like par four. I'm pretty sure this is a par four. So we'll play 10% off the tee box. And this hole right here, you have the option to bounce it off of this fairway um, and then roll it up through here. And then from there, you'll play a second shot to the hole at 0%. And uh, that's going to be one of the options to play. You, know, you can always play it to the left. I don't feel like playing it to the left is, uh, you know, the best way to play this hole. But if you are, you know, worried about this bunker or this rough and stuff to the right, then playing it, you know, to the left sand side uh, would definitely be an option. And most likely, it's either going to be a bounce over shot or uh, or an overpower shot to just try to get it as far up this fairway as possible. Then giving you most likely, I would say, um, a max long iron or a, a min uh, to 25% maybe wood shot to the hole. And that's going to be the way you play it from the left. Now, last time, you know, we had a good wind. And if you have high enough level clubs, <clears throat> you can try to go for the green on this shot. You can either try to land it in here and bounce it up here and then toward the green. Uh, or there was, a, there was a power curl hook shot that came in over here uh, and went towards the green as well. So different kind of options here on this hole, and uh, it's one that I believe, you know, either way, whether or not you're going to go for the green, uh, or you're just going to try to dial in your, uh, your your long iron or your short iron or your wood, I think you have a, a good chance because this is a fairly good landing zone up here around this green, and it will give you a, a decent shot at the uh, at the actual green to, to drop that eagle. All right, we got hole number nine here. Uh, we ended up with a really tough hole. Uh, to finish out this tournament, I would say. And it's one that I don't really think the, the albatross is going to be in play for the most part. You may have some people that, that can find it. And in higher level divisions with good wind, uh, there may be you know some ways to play this hole that give you a little bit better better chance. But for the most part, it's going to be a, a tough albatross. And uh, it's going to be a hole that you really just want to make sure you don't screw up and, and not get the eagle on. So par 5. From the first tee, we're playing 0% elevation. From the second tee, we'll play plus 10% elevation. Okay. And you can play the shot to the left-hand side or to the right-hand side. If you play to the left, you're either playing to lay up here to the end of this fairway, if or if you get a strong enough tailwind uh, with higher level clubs from like a second tee, you could probably maybe go over this rough line and get your shot up into this zone right here. But that would be a, a good case scenario with good wind. You'd have to have a, a club with lots of top spin, and you might want to use uh, some sort of a wind ball or you know something like that. So it's definitely going to be a, a tough shot to play. From the left hand side, you'll play plus twenty percent uh, for your shot, and you'll be playing from this location right here, uh, one of your woods with a lot of uh, distance on it. So like the big dog would be a good one to use, and you use uh, right spin right curl and some top spin to take that shot towards the hole either going for the green or just trying to lay up on the edge of the green for that for that easy eagle chip and that's that's all you got to do if you want to play it to the left hand side um, and that's kind of like the conservative way to play this hole if you want to play it to the right hand side you know we're going to be playing the bounce somewhere in this zone right here and then over this rough up this fairway Okay, you want to try to get it as far up this fairway as possible. That's going to give you the best look at this next shot. <clears throat> so for this next shot, you can play uh, either to the bounce over right here, uh, or you can try and play more directly over towards the hole. But uh, you'd be playing about plus forty percent on that uh, second shot. It's a very severely downhill. And depending on where you are at on that fairway uh, will determine the type of shot that you can play uh, towards that uh, towards that hole for sure. 
So, tough hole. I don't know. I'm not sure if there is a, a rough bump opportunity right here or not. I could not remember. I want to say that maybe, you know, if you're at, at a good enough position, there may be some sort of a rough bump opportunity, you know, for uh, for this hole. But I just can't, I can't completely 100% remember um, on this hole if this was one of the holes that had the rough bump or not. But keep that in mind as, uh, as a slight possibility with the perfect type of wind because I could see it being tough to, to adjust, you know, down into, into these bunkers right here. Um, and there is just a slight little strip of rough right there. So possible, possible that there's a rough bump opportunity there. But I think in Expert last time, I played a drive where I bounced over the rough. And, and then I had a, um, a wood club to the, to the hole for the, for the chance uh, at the Albatross. I don't believe I, I ever actually got the Albatross, but I got close a few different times. So, all right, thank you all very much for hanging out during this uh, information video. And good luck to you all uh, starting tomorrow, practicing on this tours 4, 9, and 11. And good luck to you all on May 11th when the Yamil Dunes tournament starts for the Spring Major Tournament. All right, have a great day. God bless.